The knee joint is a synovial bicondylar hinge joint formed by the distal femur and the proximal tibia. A gliding joint exists between the posterior surface of the patella and the femur, known as the patellofemoral joint. The tibiofemoral joint is made more congruous by two half-moon-shaped fibrocartilages, the menisci. It is also supported by the anterior and posterior cruciate ligaments and the collateral ligaments. The patellofemoral joint is a pulley mechanism designed to increase the power of the quadriceps in extending the knee. The patella is supported by a strong fibrous retinaculum. The knee joint is innervated by the femoral, sciatic and obturator nerves. There are many bursae around the knee joint protecting bony prominences and tendons from excess repetitive stress or friction. Important muscles around the knee include the quadriceps group, the hamstring group, the adductors, gastrocnemius and popliteus. The iliotibial tract, an extension of the fascia lata of the hip, provides the knee with extra support laterally. Let us begin the examination of the knee with a general observation. Note any congenital or developmental abnormality like genu varum, genu valgum, increased or decreased tibial torsion, and the femoral angle of anteversion. If necessary, measure the femoral and tibial lengths. Likewise, measure the Q angle. This angle reflects the direction of the pull of the quadriceps in relation to the patella ligament. Observe the patient's standing posture. Is the patient standing with their knees in flexion or in hyperextension? Note any overt swelling and whether this is localized from an inflamed bursa, such as the suprapatella pouch or prepatella bursa, or is it a more generalized knee effusion? Then continue with palpation. Because the knee is a complex joint, try to palpate all the clinically important structures. These are the patella and surrounding structures, the retinaculum, the tendons, and the bursae. Identify the joint line, the tibial tuberosity, the collateral ligaments, and feel the popliteus. Also try to palpate the pes answering common insertion and bursa. Then feel the iliotibial tract, the superior tibiofibular joint and the common perineal nerve, and the popliteal artery. Then continue to palpate the muscles, not in any wasting, flaccidity, or hypertonicity. Active movements of the knee may be performed either standing or lying on the plinth. Ask the patient to fully flex and extend the knee. If you need to examine the small amount of rotation the knee is able to perform, assess this with the patient seated. Demonstrate to the patient by rotating your foot internally and then externally. A painful limitation of full extension and flexion may indicate a contracture, osteoarthritic changes, or generalized edema. Next, assess the passive movements of the knee with the patient in the supine position. Hold the patient's knee and foot and guide the knee through flexion and extension. At the same time, palpate the joint by placing your fingers over the joint line and patella whilst performing this procedure. Then, with the knee in 90 degree of flexion, test external and internal rotation. Then examine the medial and lateral collateral ligaments 
by holding the knee slightly flexed and applying a varus and valgus force to assess the amount of gapping available. Note the range of movement achieved and the presence of pain. If the range of movement is reduced, then ascertain whether this is due to arthritic changes, capsular restrictions, muscle tension, or resisted due to pain. The mobility of the superior and inferior tibiofibular joint can be examined by gripping it between your thumb and index finger. In the same position, examine the active resisted movements of the knee. Test for knee flexion, then knee extension. Note the muscle strength, joint stability, the presence of pain or crepitations, and compare with the opposite side. If you need to assess some common functional movements of the knee, you may wish to ask the patient to stand on one leg, to climb some steps, to walk around the room, to squat and to kneel.